Good afternoon. Thank you all who are viewing uh, for joining us this Good Friday. I have with us today representatives of the religious leadership, the pastoral leadership of Wyandotte County. Also have with us today the Unified Government Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Alan Greiner, Reverend Desmond Lamb, President of the Kansas City, Kansas Baptist Ministers Union, Pastor of Forest Grove Baptist Church, Monsignor Stuart Swetland, President of Donnelly College, Pastor Ishmael Lopez of the Argentine Assembly of God, and Reverend Cynthia Smart of Mason Memorial Community Church. She's also a Kansas City, Kansas police and fire chaplain. We have come here today because the pastoral leadership of Wyandotte County has an important message that they would like to share with their communities and with the wider Wyandotte County community. Their message is simply this. They want us to keep the faith during this most holy time of the year for Christians, and they want us to keep safe. Keep the faith, but keep safe. As you know, previously Dr. Alan Greiner issued an order limiting religious gatherings to 10 or fewer people. His action was taken because investigations by our health department determined that religious gatherings had created widespread transmission of the virus. Dr. Greiner's order was recently superseded by Governor Kelly's order limiting religious gatherings to 10 or fewer persons. As we know, Governor Kelly's order was overturned by the Legislative Coordinating Council of the Kansas Legislature. The pastoral leadership of Wyandotte County is not concerned with the political debate at the state level, but they are deeply concerned about the health of their religious communities and no matter what the letter of the law allows or does not allow, the pastoral leadership wants to make a clear statement to their flocks that they will abide by the spirit of the order. And the spirit of the order is simply this. We must all stay at home. We must all sacrifice coming together in our church buildings. And we must sacrifice coming together even as extended families because we must stop the spread of coronavirus. The pastoral leaders here today wanted this opportunity to speak to their communities and to our wider community about the order and the need to stay at home, to keep the faith, to keep safe. For those of us who are Christians, let us remember that during this week of the passion and death resurrection of Jesus, we have a perfect example of sacrifice for one another so that we might joyously take up new life together. At this time, I introduce Dr. Alan Greiner, Chief Medical Officer, who will give us an update on the current situation of COVID in Wyandotte County. We regret that we didn't take steps earlier to work with these communities, 
But as is very clear from the scientific evidence, we're learning things every day with COVID-19. We have additional clusters in healthcare facilities. That concerns us greatly. We will do everything we can to investigate these circumstances, educate individuals, and work with them to make the sacrifices that will be necessary to slow spread. We will slow spread not just to the entire community, but across our neighborhoods, across our families, and amongst our friends. We have the ability to make a difference. By working together and paying close attention to the guidelines we're receiving on a regular basis in terms of social distancing and personal hygiene, we can overcome this and move beyond this pandemic. Again, I'd like to thank our faith leaders for joining us here today, and each will have a few words to say in regards to their specific circumstances and their plans for this important holiday. Thank you. opportunity to come and stand. Uh, my name is Reverend Desmond Lamb. I'm with the Kansas City, Kansas Baptist Ministers Union. I'm the moderator of Paul Valley Missionary Baptist District Association that has over 30 Christian Baptist churches in Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is imperative that pastors and churches comply fully the state and local gathering restrictions of 10 and less that have been implemented and recommended by Mayor David Alley, Alvey, Governor Laura Kelly, and the health care experts who are working with them daily to provide best policies and practices for reducing the spread of COVID-19 here in the state of Kansas and Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. This is no time for spiritual radicalism. It is the responsibility of each pastor and church to act responsibly and to lead by example. To every pastor who's given leadership to the precious parishioners under your care, God has charged us to be the teacher and the example. For those clergy who haphazardly choose to continue to place the health and welfare of church members and the community at large in danger, it is biblically and morally inconsistent with being a shepherd of integrity. It is irresponsible and reckless. In these difficult times, we must endeavor to be a part of the solution and not the problem. To defy these meeting restrictions, is negligent, selfish, and reprehensible. As a member of the clergy, I understand that as a community of faith, the church is a safe place. However, we must not turn our safe places into sanctuaries of predation. I implore every pastor, church leader, and parishioner across the state of Kansas and Wyandotte County, Kansas, to rethink your actions during this vulnerable time in our nation and particularly in Kansas City, Kansas. We have been gifted by God with the ability to express our faith in many ways, Facebook, radio, web pages, etc. Brother and sister clergy, we are in a state of emergency and our actions in these critical moments will determine how soon we will get beyond this health care emergency. Join me, Mayor Alvey, other community leaders, and our trusted health partners in combating this unprecedented health crisis 
in our country. Please honor the mandates that are before us. Please honor the mandates that are before us. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Lamb. I now welcome Monsignor Stuart Swetland, President of Dawson College. Good afternoon. Fear is useless. What is needed is faith. On a normal Good Friday afternoon, I would not be standing in City Hall in front of a microphone. I would be standing in front of a microphone with a large congregation commemorating, remembering, and celebrating the passion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The celebration, the celebration that would be normal for my congregation as a Catholic priest and for our common celebration is a sign of love. It is a sign of self-gift. It's a combination of a life lived of love, a life lived of a total self-gift. This is what we see in Jesus of Nazareth. And you don't have to be a person of faith to admire his self-sacrificial love. These are not normal times. We have to express the love we celebrate as Christians using different modalities. As a college president, we're currently educating through different modalities, and we need to celebrate our faith using these and other modalities that will be, for us, a way of continuing our proclamation of the saving word of Jesus Christ, but will also allow us to keep our parishioners and our neighborhoods and our neighbors safe. The loving thing to do in this moment of pandemic, the Christian thing to do, the only socially ethical thing to do at this point of time is to follow the reasonable request of our medical professionals and our political leaders in following the guidelines that they have published. Thank you. Thank you, Monsignor Swetland. I now, now welcome Pastor Ismael Lopez, Argentine Assembly of God. Good afternoon. As Mayor Alvi said, my name is Ismael Lopez. I'm one of the ministers, one of the pastors at Argentine Assembly. Thank you, Mayor Alvi, for your continued outreach to the faith-based leaders in Wyandotte County and your continued leadership in working to protect our community from further spread of COVID-19. I'm pleased to be here today to speak on behalf, not only on my congregation in Argentine community of Kansas City, Kansas, but to speak to the broader Hispanic-based community about the need to maintain safe and social distancing guidelines at home and our worship places also. This impact of COVID-19 on the Latino community across our nation has been especially hard, not only from a health perspective, but economically. This impact of COVID-19 on the Latino community has been very difficult. We are here today standing side by side through maintaining six, six feet apart or distancing from each other as church leaders in Wyandotte County uniting to protect our congregations and flock from further spread of this disease. Each of us recognize the need to temporarily refrain from in-person religious services, especially through Holy Week, regardless of whether whatever guidelines are placed or not in place and recommended by the state or local level. 
We appreciate the UG's recent guidelines allowing the alternative drive-in services as a way to accommodate some church services and on alternative matters. But as faith-based leaders, it is common sense we also, we must prevail. We have a responsibility, a responsibility to our church members, their families, our neighbors, and the most vulnerable in Wyandotte County. Our actions today, encouraging the local faith-based community to refrain from in-person church services and meeting this weekend and going forward uh, until public health crisis is over, we will save lives. That is something each of us at this podium work to do in differing every single day. I'd like to say also, I really encourage this. There is a church in this city that the pastor, and not only the pastor, but that the entire church has been infected. Alcanzo a la ciudad, comunidad hispana, les eh, animo no nos están impidiendo a que no tengamos servicio, pero es importante que como hispanos podamos mantenernos mínimo seis pies y si es posible refrenarnos de tener un servicio en una casa que nosotros llamamos adoración. No es que no vamos a adorar a Dios ni celebrar, pero es muy importante como comunidad hispana que sigamos los reglamentos. to our roots, 
outside and meeting and doing the ministry that we need to in a new way, and that is a virtual way. God's word will still go out and reach the ears, the minds, the souls of those that God has called us to. We, as the faith community, must lead by example for the well-being of our congregations and our community. God bless you. say on behalf of the people of Wyandotte County, thank you to our religious leadership. Thank you to all the pastors who have joined in on our weekly calls. And I want to say a special thank you to those who are gathered here today. Uh, Pastor Lopez, Monsignor Sweatman, Reverend Smart, Reverend Lamb, representatives of the pastoral leadership of all of Wyandotte County. They will find a way to keep the faith and they are finding ways to keep us safe. So that concludes. Are there any questions that we could uh, take from you? Aside from religious gatherings, another big piece of news today was the River Bend uh, facility. They are now up to 80 cases and 10 deaths. Uh, what are you seeing there, Dr. Greiner? What, what can you tell us about that situation and uh, what, what's happening there? Thank you for that question. We are continuing our investigation at River Bend. We have multiple staff members working on that daily. We had a large meeting virtually yesterday with epidemiologists from the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, and I visited the facility myself. We went through all of the procedures that have been in place and that are currently in place, and the facility is, is working as hard as they can under the circumstances. We believe that, that this cluster of cases arose during an incubation period when individuals had no idea that they were infected and, and because of the close quarters there and the conditions of the individuals there, it spread rapidly. Now many of the staff are, are having to work 16 hour days, seven days a week. So we're also, in addition to the investigation, working diligently with other partners such as the government emergency management systems, the state emergency management systems, to try to find them additional resources to get them through. We, we also are working hard to do additional planning and, and do education and training with other facilities across the county. It, it seems to me, uh, what, what can this case, what can this facility teach us about the way this virus spreads and the way it could impact other facilities? So I, I think it teaches us that the level of infectivity, especially among people who may not yet be showing symptoms, can be significant and severe. And when people are in close quarters, there's high risk of transmission. Thus, the mandate and the policies we put in place about trying to reduce gatherings so that so that no gatherings more than 10 people are occurring. And even with gatherings more than 10 people, we'd like to see those people social distancing, practicing hygiene, and doing as many things as they can to reduce spread. We, we know healthcare facilities require care that, that involves close contact. So we're now recommending people use universal precautions when they're doing things like caring for family members or others, protecting yourself both by, by doing personal hygiene measures, but also doing things like, like wearing masks when you know you'll have to end up closer than six feet to other people for extended periods of time is something that we're recommending and the CDC is also recommending now. Um, so it, I know it's it's written in this press release um, as far as the, the drive-in services go, um, but could you um, or someone please explain just kind of some of the guidelines that if, if there are churches that want to do this, what the guidelines that you'd like for them to follow? Yes, thank you. So 
The general idea is that we believe individuals in their own vehicles can safely come together in a parking lot or someplace else where, where they can interact. Again, it's almost like virtual interaction because they'll be in vehicles and there will probably have to be some kind of technology utilized to, to broadcast the service. But we want to stress that as people are in their vehicles, we want them to we want them to still still be careful. So they we we don't want family members from multiple households in the same vehicles. So in a vehicle, we want everybody from the same household in that one vehicle, just like the, 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 what's going on in terms of people in their own homes and residences. We're allowing individual vehicles to roll down their driver's side windows, but not both windows because we want to keep some spacing and, and some barriers between the individual vehicles. Uh, we're, we're requesting that individuals not leave their cars at all. So we don't want individuals going into buildings and facilities even to use the restroom. So we want people who are, who are going to do this to, to plan ahead and use the restroom before they, before they head out to the service. And we want the services to start and end and, and people to only come for a brief period before the service and, and leave right away after. And, and we're certainly encouraging people not to do this and then do a bunch of other things in the community that, that same day. Um, but, but people need to engage in some essential activities, of course, right? Like going to the grocery store or filling their cars up with gas. But by staying home, you're protecting yourself, you're protecting your neighbors, you're protecting the whole community. So that's the general idea. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to take a picture.